Hey, Dr. Romano, it looks like you're hard at work. What are you up to today? Hi, come on over. I'm doing some organic mechanisms that I like to show the DAT group, my study group on Facebook, which there's so many new students that I want to share some good questions that you're going to see on your DAT. Now, okay, Dr. Romano. in the first example, you have two secondary halides and you have one mole of NaCN. If you ever see anything with cyanide, almost always it's going to be an SN2 reaction. Now, since there's only one mole, we got to decide which one of these groups is going to be the leaving group, iodine or fluorine. The carbon to fluorine bond is very strong, so I don't think the fluorine is going to want to leave. Iodine is a great leaving group, so that's the group that's going to leave. And since it's an SN2 reaction, we're going to do an inversion. So the way I show that there's an inversion, if you remembered that there's going to be a backside attack, I am going to change the stereochemical designator from a wedge to what we call a dash, which are these lines right here. And the iodine is the leaving group. So you would replace it, but don't forget, you got to show the stereochemistry. So this first reaction went by an SN2 process. Notice in an SN2, we always like to use a solvent that's polar aprotic. Good examples of polar aprotic would be something like DMSO or DMF. Problem number two is another secondary halide. But if you look at the conditions, don't focus on the solvent. Focus on this reacting nucleophile. In this example, this is sodium ethoxide. If you ever see a secondary or a tertiary halide with sodium methoxide or sodium methoxide, even sodium hydroxide, almost certainly it's going to be an E2 reaction. So what I do is I show an E2 where I remove the bromine and I go to the inside and I remove the hydrogen from the inside and I form the more substituted alkene. We call this the Zaitsev product, and therefore this process would be in E2. Now, if the dad ever said to you, would there be a competing reaction? There's always a competing reaction. Who you think is going to compete against E2? And that would be SN2. So an SN2 product would be the minor product, and that would look like this. So we would have the major by E2, the minor by SN2. Must have for the debt. Problem number three, I'm going to give you two sequences. You have bromine and light. Um, the other day, you all got jackhammered on my problem where I had NBS. Normally, we don't use NBS if it's an alkyl type of a situation where we just have an alkane. Usually, we'll use bromine and light. We'll reserve NBS mainly for the allylic or benzylic brominations. So what we're going to do in this example is we are going to do a radical mechanism in which we replace the tertiary hydrogen preferentially over all the other hydrogens and put in a bromine. Now, focus on this base. It's gigantic. It's called sodium T-butoxide. And therefore, it's going to remove the bromine. Of course, the bromine is going to leave, but the hydrogen that's going to leave is not the innermost, but the one on the outside. And we call this... Some people call it the anti zaitsev but the correct terminology would be Hoffman. So this would be a Hoffman elimination, and the mechanism here would be an E2. This mechanism here would just simply be a radical substitution reaction. So I first did a radical substitution, and then I fouled it by an E2, but I abstracted a hydrogen from the very end, the most accessible hydrogen, and we call this the Hoffman product. Problem number four is a tricky question. I gave you a secondary halide, and here the only environment is a weak nucleophile. This is going to set the stage for an SN1. Anytime there's an SN1, we know it's two steps. The first step, being the slow step, is the formation of the intermediate carbocation. If you form that intermediate carbocation, I hope you can realize that you would put a plus charge at this position. And if we did a shift, we take a hydrogen and we moved it over, you would end up with a rearranged carbocation that would look like this. 
So the iodine left, put a carbocation here. We did the shifter, we got a tertiary. The nucleophile comes in and captures this, and we would get this. So this would end up being the SN1. This is an SN1 mechanism with a rearrangement. That's a tricky one. If you look at this one, you first look at this and you would say to yourself, this is a sure bet SN1. Well, it's a tertiary um, halide. The nucleophile is weak. Indeed, tertiary does SN1. I get very nervous when I see reflux or heat on a tertiary because tertiary loves to do elimination. Since the base here or the nucleophile is not strong, it's gonna go E1 and therefore, we always form an E1, and we always do Zaitsev. So with heat, we're going to have E1 as the major, and if I ever ask who would be the minor, of course, that would be the SN1 minor. But it would only be a minor only because of the heat. If there was no heat, then SN1 would have been the major. So you have five types of questions. We have all these type of questions in Destroyer, but all five of these are must-haves for the DAT exam. They're not going to ask anything super difficult, but if you understand this, I think you're good to go for the DAT test. Thank you, Dr. Romano. I had a quick question. I yes. know your uh, notes are going to come out for the Orgo and for the Gen Chem 2 to help us out, give us a little bit of direction. You expect those to be out in the next few days or so? I expect so? them to be out. Um, I'm working a little on it now. Um, I'm putting some graphics in. I think you're going to be enchanted with these notes, um, equal to the bile notes that I made. Okay, I hope that um, gives you a good idea, and I'm going to say goodbye. The next time you'll see me, maybe I'll do a little deals all the work. Okay, Dr. Romano, okay, thank you. I'm one step closer to 30. Goodbye to you, sir.